Hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday's Wellness Tip. I'm Julie Crane and thanks for joining me for this week's tip. This week we're on part five of how to fix headache, brain fog, insomnia, gut pain, and joint pain. Or by now you know the answer, it's hydration. So to recap a little bit of what we've learned previously is we've learned about the cues of dehydration. We've learned that most of us are in a dehydrated state. We've learned that there are many illnesses and diseases that are either caused by or exacerbated by dehydration. We've learned that there's been a new discovery of a fourth stage of water, which is called gel or structured water. We've learned that we can hydrate better through using plants versus just water alone. We've learned why smoothies are the best way to help us get hydrated. We've learned how to even apply a timed release hydration strategy. And we've also learned the importance of adding a little bit of healthy salt. So something like a Himalayan or a Celtic or a sea salt into our water and or smoothies. So this week we're gonna talk a little bit about how does water actually get into where it's needed? How does it get where it can moisten your skin, saturate your brain, get hydration to your muscles, to your organs and to your tissues? So how does that actually happen? Have you ever given that any thought? Well, today we're going to talk about what it is that does that, and it's our fascia. Yeah, fascia may be something that you aren't familiar with at all, but it is actually a specialized, extraordinarily light, so kind of like a gossamer, um, gauzy tissue that lies under your skin, and it's also between and around your bones and your organs. You have miles of it in your body. Fascia is actually one of the anatomically deepest mysteries that scientists are currently exploring. So there's still much more to learn. Dr. James Ouchman says that fascia forms the largest system in the body. So it's crazy that most of us don't know anything about it, right? But fascia forms the largest system in the body as it is the system that touches all other systems. But I think most of the reason that we don't know a lot about fascia is because up until recently, it was just considered a protective wrap, much like saran wrap. So nobody really gave it much thought. But um, for those of us that have experienced what's called plantar fasciitis, we know that that can be very difficult. So plantar fasciitis is, is actually quite common, but it's an inflam um, painful inflammatory condition of the connective tissue in the arch of the foot. And for people that experience that, it can be quite painful. Every time that you put your foot to the floor or put any weight on your foot, you can experience quite a bit of painful, um, like, pins and needles type experience. But other than that, many people are very unaware of what fascia is or what it does. But in 2005, that was the key time when things were getting to be discovered. And a physician named Jean-Claude Gamberdeau discovered through the use of a fiber optic camera that fascia was actually this unique mesh that was pulsing and moving almost as if it were breathing. Now this clear netting he found was actually um, transporting water droplets, revealing for the very first time that fascia was one of the body's major water transport systems. Fascia was seen watering our tissues just as if it were watering a garden. So what they found is that fascia has like a hollow tubing and slide-like sheets that actually um, send the water that you drink out into your tissues. And this discovery proves that fascia also plays a vital role connecting hydration with body movement. So it works kind of like a hydraulic pump, pumping action. 
So it constricts and releases, constricts and releases. And this is the key to the water transport out into those other areas in your body. But they found out that fascia is not only transporting water, but it is actually made of water. Yeah, it's made of gel water and collagen. So it acts as an electrical system, so it runs on and it's made of water, and it also acts as a sonic system. So this is one that utilizes vibrational energy and sound energy. So this is pretty amazing because this opens up a whole world of diagnostic and therapeutic possibilities of healing and vitality. There are ancient vibrational healing methods that have been used for generations. And now we're starting to understand why those techniques have had success. So some of them, just to name a few, are things like tuning forks, sound baths, singing bowls, drumming, um, music using specific um, pitches and vibrational sounds, um, and like biennial beats, and also frequency machines, just to name a few. But uh, this helps us understand why these make such a difference. So you have now learned the two top discoveries of our time. One, gel water, and two, what the fascia is more than just saran wrap. It does way more than just act as a protecting wrap. So interesting fact, they found as they looked at fascia, that fascia contains um, neuroreceptors. And these neuroreceptors are found to be concentrated in certain channels or areas of the fascia, rather than just being equally distributed across all of it. Now, the reason that this is so interesting is because a uh, physician, Helene Langevin, who is a neurologist at the University of Vermont, found when she compared the meridian lines for acupuncture, so acupuncture is an ancient um, ancient technique that's been used for healing, that when she compared those with the neuroreceptor maps from the fascia is that there was an 80% overlap. So basically, when acupuncture is being used, is it is activating those neuroreceptors that are found in the fascia. So pretty cool. Now, if you want to experience what fascia feels like and fascia at work, I invite you to join me on this little technique I'm going to show you. So I'm gonna sit back just a little bit so that you can see me. Stretch your arm out, keep your elbow locked, keep it stiff and bring your palm up and splay your fingers as wide as possible. And be, as you begin with the palm facing up, gently rotate around as far as you can. So you're gonna to try to draw a complete circle in the air with your thumb. So to see this from the side, again, stretch your arm out, keep your elbow bent, splay your fingers, begin with palm up, and take and leading with your thumb. Try to draw a circle using your thumb. I want you to just notice as you do this twist, are you able to feel it all the way from your fingers up in through your arm and up into the shoulder of your back? Well, that is your fascia at work. There is more fascia at work here than there is muscles, tendons, or nerves. Isn't that amazing? So another way to kind of become aware of your fascial system is to check in with your posture. So how are you sitting right now? Are you hunched over? Well, sit up and fix your posture. And did you realize that it actually uses more fascia to hold you up than it does your spine? Fascia is such an amazing thing. And recognize that when we're hunched over, it can actually impede the flow, constricting the tissues and um, constricting our breathing. So like a kinked hose, 
if you want it to water the garden and there's a kink in it, you're not going to get much water. So just like that kinked hose, you need to go and find the kink and release it. And for us, that means sitting up, um, releasing that kink that comes from hunching over and um, sitting up straight, which will allow for better um, hydration, will bring more fluids to the tissues and be able to breathe better and release that constriction. Now, if you've been hunched over for a while and that's been your posture, it may feel a little uncomfortable because you're stretching that fascia that has tightened up and is probably dehydrated around there. But as you continue to hydrate yourself and to sit up and correct your posture, you will soon begin to feel more vitality um, through having better posture and creating better flow. So one of the things that we can do to really take good care of our fascia system is dry brushing. So I don't know if you're familiar with dry brushing or not, but it's kind of been known for its wonderful exfoliating effects and also that it will enhance blood circulation in our skin and our lymphatic drainage. But it also helps fascia in three different ways. Number one, it stimulates different kinds of receptors and nerve ends in the, fa in the fascia. Number two, it provides a pinpoint compression from the bristles, not unlike a superficial acupuncture treatment. And three, it helps push fluid across the fascial system. So if you haven't ever tried dry brushing, now might be a great time to get one. You can find one at um, any kind of a health food store, um, and uh, you can, you know, there are regular ones with just regular bristles, or mine have actually some copper uh, strands that are um, scattered throughout the brush, so you can find one, something like that. But if you just go into your local health food store, they can help you or direct you, or you can always buy one online. But um, they're great, so, and they feel wonderful. Actually, your body will really like you if you begin dry brushing on a regular basis. So we know that fascia is still full of amazing unknowns, but one of the things that we have realized through this new studying is that it requires hydration in order for fascia to be able to do its job. So it must be hydrated because the fascia can dehydrate out and then of course it's not able to distribute the fluids through the body. So it needs hydration. So even though this fascia research is new, techniques for manipulating fascia and keeping it elastic are ancient. And those are things like yoga, tai chi, qigong, dancing. Those are fun, wonderful ways to keep your fascia in great condition. And as you become more aware of your living fascial system inside of you, and you give it your attention by improving your hydration, straightening your posture, um, giving your body frequent stretch breaks, um, using dry brushing, you will be rewarded with increased energy and more vibrant life force. So thank you for joining me today to learn more about how we can properly hydrate. Next week, we're going to finish our discussion on hydration with the topic of movement. So I look forward to seeing you then and have a great week. Bye for now.